Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalist resuming our topics on pulmonology. There's a pulmonology playlist on my YouTube channel and it has more than 50 videos so far. We have talked about chronic bronchitis and emphysema before. Today I'll talk about COPD, an umbrella term that includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema and let's get started. Some words of wisdom from the great Zig Ziglar. When you are tough on yourself, life is going to be infinitely easier on you. It's called self-discipline, guys. Well, I don't agree with him. Uh, that's why he is a world-famous speaker and you are a young boy sitting in your mother's basement. Because we live in a world of cause and effect. Chronic bronchitis plus emphysema equals COPD. Most patients with COPD has both. Chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Symptom-wise, dyspnea plus cough plus sputum plus irreversible airflow obstruction, this is COPD. This is different from asthma, especially intermittent asthma, because it's episodic, it's reversible. So asthma is reversible, COPD is fixed. It's as fixed as a male copulatory organ in the pre-orgasmic phase. Causes, inflammatory stimulus, and here's the most common cause, cigarette smoke. Could be related to dust or pollution or others. Pathophysiology, smoking damages the large airways, small airways, and lung parenchyma. Large airway damage, this is called chronic bronchitis, guys. This is the blow bloater. Mucus production, this is a productive cough. Tons of mucus. Small airway damage, this is what we call emphysema. We have airflow obstruction, hyperinflation, barrel chest, this is emphysema. How to diagnose COPD? Please remember, bronchitis without objective airway obstruction is not COPD. It has to be objective. Not every patient will say, Doc, I'm short of breath, my breath is labored, I have been smoking for 30 years, I have wheezing and productive cough, and the first letter in my disease is called COPD. No, 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 that's the very typical presentation. Most patients or many patients will say, Doctor, I cannot climb up the stairs anymore. I gotta use the elevator, man. Life is tough. This is COPD. Doesn't have to be dyspnea and cough and productive sputum and all. No, no, no. Okay. And be very subtle. Okay? The first guy is very typical. He is as subtle as a brick through the window. Next, I cannot ride the bicycle anymore. Be very, your antenna should go on. Bam, bam, bam. Should go off. Okay. I cannot run as I used to. Could be COPD. Diagnosis, productive cough for at least three consecutive months, four or within at least two consecutive years. That's why it's a clinical diagnosis and it's a chronic disease. If you started coughing yesterday, it's not COPD. If you leave every doctor alone to decide from his own wishes, it's going to be a disaster. Let's add some guidelines. These are not like laws that you must or have to follow. These are just guidelines. The gold criteria, gold 1, 2, 3, and 4. The severity of gold 1 is mild, 2 is moderate, 3 is severe, 4 is very severe. Based on what? Based on your opinion? No. Objective truth. FEV1. Gold 1, FEV1 is greater than or equal 80% of predicted, 2 is 50 to 79%, 3 is 30 to 49%, and 4 is less than 30%. This is so severe. Why do we have hypoxemia or low PaO2 in COPD? It's a VQ mismatch, all right, here is your alveoli, destroy its elastin. Do you think oxygen, which is P big AO2 in the alveoli, will go into P small AO2 in the arterial blood? It's not gonna happen. Will this patient respond to oxygen therapy? Yes, if you give lots of oxygen, more of it, okay, although not perfect, but more of it will go into the arterial blood and you are improving the patient's symptoms. And please watch my video on tissue hypoxia to know more about the conditions that respond to oxygen therapy and conditions that do not. Management of COPD. Number one, please stop smoking. If you cannot do it, we'll try nicotine patch, nicotine gum, nasal spray, or tablet. There is a drug called Veronicline, trade name Chantix. And by the way, there is a very nice video that will make you laugh. It's just pure satire about Veronicline or Chantix. I will leave the link in the description below. It's just, just for you to laugh and remember the side effects of Chantix. Violence, increased suicide ideation, and others. You can try bupropion, but be careful. It lowers the seizure threshold and the patient is more vulnerable to seizures. 
Short-acting beta agonists such as albuterol, PRN means as needed for all patients. If it failed, you go to the next tier. Long-acting beta agonists, and again, never give long-acting beta agonists alone. Always combine them with inhaled corticosteroids. Inhaled corticosteroids is used for gold stage 3 and 4. Again, depending on the FEV1. Not the ratio, just the FEV1. Do not use inhaled corticosteroids as long-term monotherapy. And of course, do not use oral corticosteroids for long-term because they have lots of side effects. Try to always combine long acting beta agonists with ICS, which is inhaled corticosteroids. Why? The pros. They reduce exacerbation. This is called synergism. Synergism is 1 plus 1 equals 3, which is a mathematical insanity, but a pharmacological reality. The cons of combining both of them together, you have increased risk of pneumonia because steroids are anti-immunity. Now you'll have a weaker immunity, you're more vulnerable to infections, and pneumonia is a lung infection. If the patient experiences frequent exacerbation of COPD, use azithromycin, which is a macrolide. If it's a macrolide, it's gonna, it could prolong the QT interval, leading to cardiac arrhythmia. Please avoid in patients with coronary artery disease or congestive heart failure. They destroy this azithromycin, the gram-positive flora, and increase the risk of gram-negative infections. Never, ever, 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 ever use anti-leukotriene drugs in cases of COPD. They are useless. We can use them in asthma, but not in COPD. Why not? Because in the pathogenesis of COPD, there is no mention of leukotrienes whatsoever. Therefore, do not use the LUX inhibitors such as the famous Xylutin, and do not use the leukotriene receptor antagonist such as the famous Montelukast. Vaccinate the patient against a bacteria and against a virus. What kind of bacteria? Pneumococcal. And what kind of virus? The influenza, baby. That's the flu shot. New drug, it's called Reflumelast, and it's, by the way, oral. Oral drug for a patient with COPD? We're living in heaven. Um, watch my previous video, it's called Respiratory Pharmacology, and it's in this playlist called Pulmonology to know the mechanism of action of this great Ruffalumalast. Who named these things? Oxygen use in COPD patients. First, why? As Friedrich Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. He who has a why to oxygen can bear almost any mask. Why? To reach an oxygen saturation of 90% or more. Now, when should you start oxygen therapy? If one of these conditions are met. Number one, resting arterial pressure of oxygen of less than 55 or SAO2 less than 88%. This is the first condition. The patient can have this or this. Or if the patient has core pulmonary plus resting PaO2 less than 59 or SAO2 less than 89. We have increased this because the patient already has a disaster. So they balance each other in the second condition. There are three ways to administer oxygen generally. Okay, this is not COPD, but in general. You can use the oxygen mask. And as you see in the movie, you put the mask on the patient's face and then it's connected to an oxygen tank or any source of oxygen but the patient is doing the breathing himself. <sighs> this is done by the patient. Number two, you can put the same mask on the patient's face, but it's connected to a machine called CPAP or BiPAP. This machine forces the oxygen into the patient's mouth or nose against his will, just to his lung, continuous positive airway pressure, because normally your intrapleural pressure is negative, but this is called a CPAP, continuous positive. We are forcing the oxygen into your lungs. That's why you get a positive pressure, because we are pushing and shoving air into your lungs. The third option of delivering oxygen, this is getting serious. Mechanical ventilation with intubation. This is invasive. So here is the patient in the tracheal tube. Put the tube, insert it into the patient's trachea, and then we put him on a machine called a mechanical ventilator, and then we can adjust the rate, we can adjust the tidal volume, and we can adjust the inspiratory flow, etc., etc., etc. 
Some people believe that the purpose of a pulmonologist is to intubate and mechanically ventilate people. No, 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 no. It's a conspiracy theory because people Google too much these days. The purpose of a pulmonologist is to keep you off the ventilator, to use less severe and less invasive procedures such as the oxygen mask or the CPAP. COPD exacerbation. First, what's the definition of a COPD exacerbation? Worsening of respiratory symptoms beyond the normal variation requiring change in meds. It's getting really ugly. Symptoms. Progressive dyspnea, not to be confused with the insurance company or with the political ideology. Productive cough, wheezing, and hypoxemia. It's getting really serious. Diagnosis. Chest x-ray. ECG, why? To rule out pulmonary embolism. But I thought that I need like um, a VQ scan or maybe like a CT pulmonary angiography or... No, 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 no. This patient doesn't have like a DVT and swollen and all of those of DVT. No, this patient just has a COPD exacerbation. So we use the ECG to just rule out to rule out PE because it's it's not PE. We, we know that. But if it's the, the, like 1% chance... Don't just, oh, CT scan with pulmonary, no, this is, will expose the patient to a lot of radiation, so just calm down and use the AKG and look for the changes associated with PE. Arterial blood gas, do not use spirometry to diagnose a patient for COPD exacerbation. Okay, it is, we don't have time to go to the pulmonary function test lab, it's, it's just, uh, just get your head out of your sphincter. Do not use PEFR, which is peak expiratory flow rate this is the flow volume loop and i've talked about this before management of copd exacerbation are you ready short acting beta agonist plus an anticholinergic if needed such as the famous ipratropium systemic steroids which is oral prednisone we cannot keep using oral prednisone forever because they have lots of side effects it's only for the exacerbation if there is infection add antibiotics and then use this BiPAP with non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. Or this is your last resort when the bleep hits the fan. Invasive mechanical ventilation with intubation. This is invasive, so last resort, please. Does COPD present with nail clubbing? And the answer is no. But I saw a patient with COPD and clubbing. How come? There is something else going on here, doofus such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, suppurative lung disease including bronchiectasis and lung abscess, lung cancer, mesothelioma, that's why I called you this name, I'm, I'm sorry, forgive my language, but you should not miss a lung cancer. The best predictor of FEV1 is pack years of cigarette smoking. The greater the number, the lower the FEV1. The best thing a COPD patient can do to his or her lung is to stop smoking before it's too late. FEV1 is an excellent prognosticator of COPD. The lower the FEV1, the worse the prognosis. What reduces mortality in COPD? Smoking cessation, absolutely. Oxygen, indeed, oxygen is life. Lung volume reduction surgery and lung transplant. By the way, please remember this. There is no medication that reduces mortality or reduces FEV1 in COPD patients. Take it to the bank. And it's a very famous exam question, especially for step two. Which of the following will reduce the mortality in this patient? And they will give you A, B, C, D. All of them are pharmacological drugs. And then E, oxygen. So the answer is going to be oxygen or lung transplant or lung volume reduction or smoking cessation. But don't pick a beta agonist or a muscarinic antagonist. Shut up. And for sure as heck, don't pick a leukotriene inhibitor because leukotrienes have nothing to do with COPD. What reduces mortality in COPD? Exacerbation. And here is it. Here it is. BiPAP, a non-invasive pulmonary ventilation. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and smash like. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can get my premium videos, my notes, and my slides for this lecture available at patreon.com slash medicosis and organized in Dropbox folders. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.